This German game show has been going viral on social media for quite a while, and because the theme for the GMTK gem this year is build with skill, I thought, why not turn it into a video game? The point of the game show is to cut an object perfectly in half so that the weight of both objects is exactly the same, or at least as close as possible. That was the main goal for my game as well, which meant that I needed to slice 2D or 3D objects into multiple pieces. I decided to go with 2D because it would give the player more control, as well as make it easier for me to make and, you know, make it easier to understand for a new player. I knew that there were plenty of assets out there that allowed me to slice objects into pieces, but I just never felt like it controlled the way that I wanted it to. This one, for example, works incredibly well. And while it accurately displays the percentage of the object size compared to the object before slicing it, it just wasn't for me. I just didn't like having to move my mouse like I was some kind of samurai and, and put force and speed behind it. I wanted to be able to carefully trace where I wanted to cut my objects and I spent hours hours trying to figure it out but I just couldn't eventually I kind of just gave up there but then later in the day I couldn't quite shake off the idea it just seemed so fun and I wondered could I maybe make a slicing mechanic myself Turns out the answer is yes. I created a polygon collider shape and turned it into a mesh to then fill it with a material, just like with the original asset. Then when I moved my mouse over it, I coded it so that it would take the points of where my mouse hit the object and adds it to a list. And afterwards that list basically becomes the line that would separate the two objects. The separating of the two objects was a nightmare. It took me multiple walks with my dogs to figure out how to split the main object into separate objects. Also, look at how cute my dogs are. First, for some reason, I thought that everything to the left of the line should be one object and everything to the right of the line should be another object. And uh, then I realized that I was stupid because what? Imagine if you slice it like this. That's not gonna cut it. <laughs> And me. But finally, I had a good idea. When I create the points based on where my mouse hit, I can then check which of those points collided with the edge of the object's collider. And since I enter and exit the shape, those would then be my start and end point, because, well, they enter and exit the shape there. I then just added those points to the polygon collider points, technically changing this shape. And then I simply go through the list of points one by one, all the way until I reach the end point. I save those points in a new list and voila, I have a new shape. Okay, yeah, it also needs a game object and like a, a, a mesh and a material and all that, but shape. I then of course do the same with the remaining points of the original object and now I can calculate just how big they are compared to the original object. 147%? Huh? Well, it seems I have gotten a little ahead of myself. It's not like I can just subtract 100 of that value to get the right value, the one that I expect, because that's just not correct in this case either. Because instead what is actually happening is that this collider is wrong. For some reason, the points are just not connected properly. Here's what happens. When it makes the new shape, it gives the new polygon collider all the points that I made. And then it sorts them all so they are all connected to the right one. But for some reason, something goes wrong with that sorting and the order completely messes up, causing the calculation of the total distance between all points to be all over the place because point one could suddenly think it's connected to point 27 when it isn't. And then the distance becomes really big. Okay, I didn't really explain this properly here, but do you see these pixels that stick out a little? That's an example of where it's going wrong. It is two points connecting in a way that they shouldn't, making an extra line part of the shape when it shouldn't be. And because then when the calculations happen, it calculates the distance between every point in the list while it goes through it one by one, you get something like that to be really, really long when it shouldn't probably even exist. I hope that made more sense than my previous explanation. I'm going to be honest here. I was ready to give up. Actually properly give up. I had a devlog for my survival automation game that I needed to edit. I just did not have the extra time to spend on this and it not working. It, I just couldn't. So on Saturday I said no thanks and I closed the project. But that night, I had an idea. What if I made it smaller? What if, instead of a random shape, I used sprites? 
small sprites. Just make a grid of pixels and when I draw a line on the sprite, it splits into two pieces there. Way more doable for me, way more approachable. And surprisingly, the next day, I was ready to go. The logic behind it was actually surprisingly simple. I have a grid of tiles and when I click a tile, it is considered as being cut. So when I want to separate the tiles, it destroys the ones that I have clicked. Then I have tiles on one side of the line and tiles on the other. Now I just take one tile and I check which tiles are its neighbor tiles and for those neighbor tiles it does exactly the same and it adds them all to a list. It's basically pathfinding just without finding the fastest way. Instead it finds every way. Incursion is cool. Recursion? Incursion? Oh boy, what have I done? But once it's compiled a list of all these tiles, I physically separate them from the rest of the tiles by changing their parent object, thus making it two separate shapes. And using the amount of tiles of the original shape, the first new shape, the second new shape, and the amount of tiles you've removed, I can accurately calculate the percentage of both new shapes, deciding whether you are able to see how to cut something in half, or if you're way off. And that, all of that, without it being over 100%. Let's go! Now, because I have no artistic skills, I decided to download some sprites from itch.io of different types of food that you could try and cut in half. And these look delicious! I love this pack! Look how cool these sprites are! It was created by Mary Betatero, and I'm genuinely sad that they do not have more asset packs. I would gladly have used all of them. But, uh... What now? How can I display these sprites as levels for my game for, as items that you have to try and cut in half without me having to place every single pixel as a separate tile? By hand. I do not like manual labor. So, I made a tool instead. I have become the meme, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> Make a tool while you could have done all the things by hand. No, this is way better. I, I did a good job here. Basically, I just now give this level creator script a sprite and it reads every single pixel. It creates a new tile for each pixel and sets the color of the tile to what that pixel's color is and changes its position to the pixel's offset, eventually creating something like this. Now, if I use this to give the game like 30 sprites, so 30 different levels and add a bunch of fancy UI stuff and tweening and even more juice through sound effects and of course a vibey song, you basically got that one game show, but now as a video game. I am genuinely so proud of this. This was such a fun project, even though I basically gave up two separate times. It is super fun satisfying and overall just great. I'm so happy that I did not give up. It just goes to show there's so much to, even with a very strict time limit, to just give yourself some time to take a step back and reiterate, to think it through and give yourself time to come up with a solution that works for you. Cause this game was made in less than 12 hours. If I can do it, you can. <laughs> You can play it right now on itch.io, link is in the description below. As of recording this, I do not know how well it did in the rankings. But what I do know is that people so far have been loving it and it has over 100 ratings already and it is uh, technically uh, not even a day after the jam. I'm genuinely surprised and a little taken aback because people have been loving it. <laughs> anyway, subscribe, see you all next time.